and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the next section for our Theros Beyond Death complete set review. We're on to black now. We've done white and blue so far, and you can you can see the order that we're going up here, just the same Wooberg order. But yeah, this is where we're going to be looking at all 254 cards in Theros Beyond Death, give an in-depth ana analysis on how they could be used in standard and give them a letter grade as well. Um, hopefully you checked out uh, the white and the blue sections, but in case you didn't, uh, we'll be giving each uh, card a letter grade. We're going to be giving it an A. An A is a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. So think of cards there like four ofs in multiple decks. It's so like Questing Beast, Murderous Rider, Bone Crusher Giant, that kind of stuff. A B is a card they will see a good amount of standard play in a support role. Um, so cards that you know like are, are like a four of in one deck maybe that's uh, pretty popular or just, you know, like cards that are like two and three ofs in, in some different decks. But like cards like Torbran, um, Ret, Realm Cloak Giant, Foulmire Knight, those are like my examples for Bs. A C is a fringe sideboard card uh, used as filler for c certain decks um, or a playable build around card. So like Claim the Firstborn was like a four of in like the Rakdos Sacrifice deck. That kind of felt like that was like a C. Um, or Outlaw's Merriment, like that's a card that you can build around. It's a powerful card. Um, play, it's a playable build around card. So like that's a C. Or like Epic Downfall, um, a narrow but still regularly used sideboard card like that. Okay, then D's are cards that you'll rarely see in standard play, but they could fill like a little bit of a role in a fringe deck, or maybe be like a fringe sideboard card. So like Cauldron of Eternity, Sir Farin, the Hench Hammer, Witch's Vengeance. You know, cards you'll just kind of see barely in standard a little bit. And then if a card's not going to be, like really shouldn't be played in standard at all, we're going to give that the limited rating. Um, so that means uh, it will be just getting an L for limited. All right, so if you're watching this later on on YouTube, uh, if you go down to the description down below, you'll have the link to the uh, the, the grading scale, like basically what I, what I was just saying there. And then also... Um, the you can uh, it'll have it's the google document they'll have all the, the ratings on there but we're gonna go ahead and go through and talk about each one um last thing that I've, I've mentioned this at the beginning of each of the videos but i've been just really busy with uh different life stuff this past month and so i haven't really been able to pay too close of attention not as as much attention uh to the spoilers i'm paying too much attention to hawkeye here but not as much attention to like the, the this previews and everything so some of these cards will be kind of newer for me, but you know we got Twitch Chat here, over here also that are um, that are going to be adding in to our grades and everything like that. So you can see what other people are saying also while I'm talking. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So our first one, Agonizing Remorse, one in a black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it or a card in their graveyard exile that card you lose a life so of course you can just kind of think of thought erasure right thought erasure is a blue and a black you look at their their hand you take a card and then you get to surveil one this does a, a couple of things better and a couple of things worse than thought erasure um first <clears throat> first this exiles the card so it doesn't go to the graveyard that's really important whenever we're talking about like cards with escape um you know you do get to just exile the card um so that's a really nice upgrade. However, you don't get to surveil one. Like a really good part about Thought Erasure is you get to keep sketchy hands with Thought Erasure. Think of how many times you've done that. And because you know your Thought Erasure is going to help you hit your land drops or find spells, you know, like whichever way you want to go. You know, if you got a sketchy hand with Thought Erasure, you get to keep it. This, you don't get that surveil one. Like that's not having that is, is a pretty big downside. Um, and then also you have to lose a life. That's kind of rough. You just lose a life. That's not cool. But it's a lot, lot easier to cast. It's one in a black. You don't have to be playing a blue-black deck. You don't have to have a blue and a black. You know, like, it's, it's just really easy to cast this. And again, like I said, it exiles. Um, but yeah, so this is just a, a really good card. Like, this should just go in a lot of different decks. Um, you know, it can go in any kind of black deck at all. Uh, you know, it, it can just be, it can be like a cyborg card instead of duress uh, for... For the most part, because like a lot of matchups where you want duress, 
maybe their removal are these adventure creatures. You know, like with these adventure creatures being everywhere, the value of duress has definitely gone way down. And so now you can have agonizing remorse. They can get rid of adventure creatures or anything else, you know, against like Jeskai fires, you get to exile their cavaliers or their fires of invention, either one. Pretty big. So yeah, I kind of think this is this may be an A. Um, and and then oh yeah, then I guess the last thing that I meant to say was that um, yeah, late game, you know, like late game, it's not a dead card anyway because you can just pay two mana and exile a card from the graveyard. You know, it is sorcery speed. That's not a very good card, but you know, it does have utility at least. It's not just doing nothing for you. Um, so you know, it's it's doing something for you. I'm not quite sure if. Um, if we want to uh, give this just a straight up A, like is this just gonna be a four of in multiple decks? Like maybe, maybe it's there. I kind of want to give it just a little bit less, just in case, like an A minus. Um, but yeah, this is like an A minus that I could certainly see this being an A, but I'll, I'll give it an A minus. Um, a minus potentially A. All right, Ephemia the Catophony. Catcophony. Cacophony. I don't know, man. Some of these words. Um, anyway, one and a B for a 2-1 flyer. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 black zombie creature creature token. It's ca 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 funny. <laughs> uh, ca Cacophony. Cacophony. Okay, so Ephemia the cacophon Cacophony. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, so this Harpy... All right, so this is a pretty decent card. So at worst, you know, we, we got a 2-mana two 2-1 two flyer. That's not bad. That's not bad. There's nothing really wrong with that. You know, like, you'll just play a 2-mana two 2-1 two flyer. You know, you do have the upside also that if you have an enchantment card at your end step, you can create a 2-2... Two two uh, zombie creature token by exiling it. That zombie creature token is not coming into play tapped, right? So that's good. So it's an untapped um, creature token. So that's certainly good. And you don't have to... Um, hey, Seneca, thank you so much for that resub. Good to be back. Good to have you back. <laughs> Listen to Cacophony by Karate. It's a great song. Um, yeah, so you don't have to do too much work for this. Um, yeah, that would be really, really nice if this was a zombie harpy also, so you could get the zombie creature type for this also. But it, this is a legendary enchantment creature, so you can't really just like play one of these on turn two and play another one on turn three if the other one doesn't die, because it is legendary. So that also kind of restricts its power as well. Um, the order's up here. Order. We did white, then blue, then now we're on black. Um, anyway... So let's see. So as far as our rating goes, um, you know, I think we're kind of between a, a B and a C with this one. Like, I do like that it's a, a two mana, two one flyer. Um, but I mean, I don't think this is maybe like we'll see as much play as like Foul Mire Knight kind of thing. So we're probably underneath that. Um, yeah, you, you can play the second and just turn the second one into a two two zombie, basically. Because, um, yeah, you can exile. A different enchantment you know so you can exile the second copy um so you can do that but that's you know i don't know how great that is but yeah um i think we kind of want to go like c plus i think it's kind of like some filler kind of thing it's not yeah it's not absolutely amazing but let's go let's go c plus All right, Aspect of Lamprey. Lamprey? Maybe Lamprey. Anyway, three and a black enchantment aura. Enchant a creature you control when Aspect of Lamprey enters the battlefield. Target opponent discards two cards and enchanted creature has lifelink. All right, so we get a uh, Mind Rot with upside. Mind Rot plus you give a creature lifelink, basically. Um, now, if you try enchanting a creature you control and they have instant speed removal, they kill your your creature in response this just goes to your graveyard and you just spent four mana on a bunch of nothing oh it is lamprey lamprey all right well um 
yeah, so basically, I think this is just going to be an L. I mean, I don't. we don't really play four mana. They discard two cards in standard, which is not really what we're doing. Uh, so we're just going to give that an L for limited. Oh, these names are just getting easier, huh? All right, so Blight Breath, Catablapas. Uh, Catablapas? Oh, they're just making, making my job easy here. All right, so four... Black, black for a 3-2 when Blight Breath um, thing enters the battlefield. Target creature and opponent controls gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is your devotion to black. All right, so basically you can use this as, like, maybe a Ravenous Chupacabra. Uh, kind of, you know, like, you can maybe kill some kill a creature whenever this enters, but this is a 6-mana 3-2. We're not really playing uh, six mana, three, two. So this is a, like, if you were thinking about putting this into your deck, you should probably Catabra, Catabla pass on that and go on to something else. All right, so we'll give this an L. Clings, cling to dust. Okay, what you doing up here? Just cling to dust. So black for an instant. Exile target creature from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, you gain three life. Otherwise, you draw a card. And it has escape. So I think the, the draw a card part is going to be like the, the thing that you want to do the most. Um, so, you want, so it's basically B, exile a, a non-creature from a graveyard, draw a card. Hmm. Like... We'd have to, and then of course it has escape. Like this is this is definitely a, a very narrow sideboard card. Like I think I don't think like you're just throwing this in any deck, because um, this is not like one mana draw card. It's it's one mana draw card if your opponent has a non creature in their graveyard that you get to exile, and so that that's definitely different. Um. It's not it's not an L. It's not going to be unplayable, but it's it's definitely a pretty narrow a fringe sideboard card. I think think that's where we're really looking here. Um you know, it's it's how how important is escape going to be? The more important it is, the better this will be. Getting rid of, you know, like an Elspeth from the graveyard um and drawing a card, you know, kind of thing. And then of course you get to keep using it later on, you know, you can escape it to take something else. And so that's that's kind of nice. I'm gonna go with like a, I think like a narrow but still regularly used sideboard card is a C, like Epic Downfall. I think that's kind of like where we're at here. Maybe a little less than that. So let's go with like a C minus. I think it's it's not that, um, really, probably won't be that highly used. All right, Discordant Piper, one in a black, two one. When Discordant Piper dies, create an O one white goat creature token. If if zombies is a deck, you need a a two mana two one zombie. Like that's that's about all. That's like the only that's the, like the only time you could play this. Um, but yeah, we're gonna give this an L. But I think that's like the only thing. Drag to the Underworld, 2BB instant, destroy target creature. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to black. This is pretty sweet. So it can be BB instant, destroy target creature, which that would be a very good card. You know, like that, that card would be very good. 2BB instant, destroy target creature is not very good. So basically that's the line. Because, you know, like we're not playing murder in standard. No one's playing murder which is one BB destroy target creature. In fact, I don't even know, maybe murder rotated out, but point is no one's playing that card. Um, so you really need this to be the two mana instant to put it into your deck. So you need to like reliably have this cost two mana. I mean, if it just did more than destroy, destroy a creature, you know, if it like destroy target creature surveil a little bit, or, you know, like if it just did a little bit, like exile the creature, you know, if this was exile, you could even see it played more um yeah so 
Yeah, this is conditionally better than murder, but I still don't think that we're really putting this into decks. I think I'm going to give this like a D though. It's like maybe you see it in play. Maybe you see it. Um, yeah, it's kind of like an L plus, but L plus isn't really a rating. So it's like I could give it like a D minus. Um, which maybe I'd just do that. But yeah, we'll just give it a D minus. D minus is like my lowest rating that's not an L, basically. Eat to Extinction, 3B for an instant. Exile target creature or planeswalker. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Okay, okay. So we get Exile, much better than Destroy. Creature or planeswalker, much better. And then you also get to Surveil one. That's that's look at the top card of your library. You may put that into your graveyard. Of course, they just don't use that keyword for this plane, but that's Surveil one. So this is easier to cast being 3B. Very easy to, to splash this card. Um, I don't really like this art too much. It's just kind of scary, like this huge mouth. I'm going to have to look at this huge mouth a lot because this is definitely a standard card. Um, so yeah, it's a new Vrassus Contempt. It's easier to cast Vrassus Contempt. And instead of gaining two life, you surveil one. And most of the time, you would rather surveil one than gain two life. Most of the time. Um, you know, unless you're you know really behind and you need the life kind of thing. So I think this is better than Contempt. It's certainly easier to cast, which kind of makes it better with that respect also. Um, so yeah, so better than Contempt. Uh, I don't, but like Contempt wasn't really a four of, like except for like the lower power standard. I think like standard right now, can, you know, like when Contempt was like towards the end of standard, it wasn't a four of. Um, Oh, I need to edit this title. Sorry, I had the wrong title for the last YouTube video. I need to edit it really quick. But anyway, so we're not going to go with an A. I think we're in the either the A minus or B plus. I think it's better than a B. So we're at A minus or B plus. Like, is it closer to an A or closer to a B? It's probably closer to an A. Question is, does this replace Murderous Rider? Uh, the answer is no. Okay, so for the most part, no, it doesn't replace Murderous Rider. Um, if you're a deck that really doesn't care about the creature too much, though, it, it could replace Murderous Rider. Um, you know, ex like, and it also matters how important Exile is. You know, like if it, if uh, you know, like if there's you know a lot of gods that are turned into creatures that you need Exile, you know, that makes this even better. Uh, but now Murderous Rider being able to be a two for one, that's always very good. Uh, but I think this card is going to play. I think people are going to be really pleased with how well this card plays uh, with having that surveil one and everything. It only deals with gods if they are turned into creatures, which isn't isn't all the time. That's not that annoying. Or sorry, that's not sorry. Really, word annoying. There. That's not super common. So I'm going to go with um, a minus here for eat to extinction because we'll go with a minus. Hey, we've got a brand new Twitch Prime sub. Welcome, welcome to the stream there, Crossfire. Thank you so much. All right, number 19 today. Um, Elspeth's Nightmare, two and a black. So we got a saga here. First chapter, destroy target creature and opponent controls with power two or less. Second chapter is duress. Okay, so you get duress. For the second chapter third chapter exile target opponent's graveyard this card's pretty good honestly um you know if you get to kill as long as you get to kill something it's all about that first chapter if you get to kill something then you get to kill it the next chapter duress and that you know you get you know you get multiple cards worth of value out of uh out of your saga and that's what you really want this does seem like this may be more of a cyborg card than a main deck card where you board it in against uh, creatures with power two or less. Um, of course, this is destroy. It's not exile. So it's not, we're not exiling like a cauldron familiar. It is destroy. But um, but when you kind of pair this, and then you also have like Bone Crusher Giant in the format that that kills creatures with toughness two or less, it, it is really incentivizing people to not play creatures like small creatures, kind of thing. But 
again, this is three mana. So, like, three mana is a lot of mana. Um, this isn't something that you're, like, playing a four of. And there there is also Legion's End in the format. And Legion's End is just super efficient and get to see their hand. And, like, basically, I don't think I'm really playing this over Legion's End too much. Because a lot of decks that are playing small creatures aren't really playing the spells for you to duress away the next turn or if they are they can be like okay well i know you're going to duress the next turn now i'm going to play this spell to get it out of my hand kind of thing so um yeah so it's 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 a good value card but yeah as far as like what we want to be doing on turn three um not so sure but yeah this if Legion's End wasn't in the format, this would be even a better sideboard card. But it's still a, a pretty decent sideboard card against aggro. But there's just a, a lot of good cards, sideboard cards against aggro. Um, so where are we looking at here? I think uh, I think a narrow but regularly used sideboard card. You know, basically like an epic downfall. I think that's kind of like where we're what uh, level we're looking at for this uh, for this card. So that's a C. So I think we're going to go ahead and just give this a C. Enemy of Enlightenment. 5B. 5-5 five, five Flyer. Gets minus one, minus one for each card in your opponent's hand at the beginning of your upkeep. Each player discards a card. Pretty cool card. I like it. It's a demon. Um, Demon's a good card type with Kalia. But I mean, I just I don't think we're gonna see this play, see this see play. But it's just like it's a cool looking card and everything. Um, yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna give it an L though, but I like the card. Erebos, the bleak hearted. What does bleak hearted mean? What does that mean? Anyway, three B for a five six indestructible. As long as your devotion to black is less than five, Erebos isn't a creature. Um, yeah, it's edgy. Uh, whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay two life. If you do, draw a card. And one in a B, sacrifice another creature. Target creature gets minus two, minus one until end of turn. Bleak is like the opposite of hope. So it has like... No hope in Erebos' heart. Oh, man, poor Erebos. Yeah, so it's only whenever... Yeah, so whenever your creatures die, you, you get to pay two life to draw cards. Um, you know, you can't... You know, this is a sacrifice outlet, but, you know, you spend two mana to sacrifice your creature, and then you give another creature only minus two, minus one. So you, you basically give another creature only... That toughness being reduced to only minus one. Like, that's... That's not much. Um, Erebos looks like the worst of the three gods that we've seen so far. It's four mana, even though you can pay life to draw cards, but that's when your creatures die. Um, that's that's basically the, the key part. The second part isn't amazing there. Hey, the hippie getting this. Um... Thanks there, Boop. Um... So remember with the, I guess we talked about this more with Heliod, but remember with the, and that's our second sub goal. Remember with the, the gods, um, a lot of time when you play them, they're going to be enchantments. Like they're not going to be creatures all the time. And when they are creatures, you're probably killing your opponent because when they are creatures, they're really awesome and they attack for a bunch and they're indestructible. And you also have another, you also have a good battlefield because you're turning your Erebos into a creature. So a lot of the time, this is going to be an enchantment. Um, yes, yeah, so there is a free sack outlet in the set. Um, it feels like this is kind of like an Orzhov card, where you want to pair it with a way, you know, pair it with white, like pair it with a way to gain life. <clears throat> so you have the extra life that you get to draw cards. You know, like Midnight Reaper, of course, is awesome. Midnight Reaper is a really, really good card. Now, Midnight Reaper is like a 3-2 that you get to have in combat right away. And um, and uh, it's you just take one damage and draw a card whenever things die. So this is taking two damage for each thing. You know, you're paying two life to draw cards. Like that's you know, that's that's a big difference. One to two. Um, 
That's 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 a big difference there. And um, Underworld says that Erebos can protect himself if they try to use creature removal on Erebos, like creature exile, and then you keep it from being a creature because you sacrifice some other creature. That seems like a a pretty like a really narrow you know thing that's going to happen, but I guess that could happen. Um But yeah, so I I don't know where we're at with Erebos. I'm not not super thrilled on Erebos. Um So let's see. As far as a grade, I mean, I kind of feel like this is more of like a, hmm, like I don't think this is a B. I don't think it's that good. Maybe like a C. Why is this the easiest god to turn into a creature? Why? Like, why, why would you say this is the easiest god to turn into a creature? Is it just because of the other black creatures? Like, it, there's nothing that makes it um, easier as far as it compared to anything else. Okay. Cause the playable B okay. Cause the, the playable BB and BBB cards. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, let's see, let's go with like a C C plus C plus. I'm going to go C+. Plus. All right, Erebus's invention. Intervention. Erebus's intervention. X, B, instant. Choose one. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. You gain X life or exile up to twice X cards from graveyards. So for two mana... You can exile two cards from the graveyards or give a creature minus one, minus one, and you gain a life. For three mana, you're giving a creature minus two, minus two, and you gain two life. Like, that's not killing a lot. That's three mana, and that's not killing a lot of things. At four mana, you're giving minus three, minus three, and gain three life. At four mana. And we're talking about at four mana. I mean, even at three mana, you have like Obnix's Cruelty, Murderous Rider, four mana. Now we got this Eat to Extinction. This this first part is not that great. I think that really for this card, you need like the, the second part, the exile up to twice X cards, target cards from graveyards to be really, really valuable too. Um, I mean, because there's even there's even Legion's End, you know, in the format and everything. I, I'm not really expecting much of, of this card. Um, this isn't really a good, this is not really a good God killer. Like how, how are you killing Erebos with this card? If your opponent has Erebos, you have to spend seven mana to get rid of Erebos, and they also have to have their Erebos turned on, which means they have a, a bunch of other stuff in play. This is not, Erebos is, like, this is not a, a god killer. No, you play things like Eat to Extinction and, and yeah, like Dispark and just other, there's a lot better things. You're not playing this for a god killer. Uh, would you rather have the Saga or this to deal with graveyard strategies? And we'll have to see. It depends on really what the graveyard strategies are, because obviously this is a very uh, slow process. Um, usually, turn three, you don't need to necessarily exile their graveyard, though. So you know, you get a couple of turns, then exile their graveyard. I mean, it it depends on what. Like, there's there's no graveyard strategies right now in standard that I'd want either of these cards. So they'd have to be new strategies. Um, and even just just saying, okay, well, there are. Um, escape cards like I'm, I'm not like playing either of these just because there's some escape cards i'm not doing that either so we'll have to kind of see um yeah but as far as black goes yeah ashiok the you know the three man ashiok that we have in standard that is kind of better at getting rid of that anyway so i'm gonna go with like a d here i guess i won't give this card an f but it's certainly playable but if if for some reason graveyards become such a big thing that you really want this, then you can play it. But I'm going to give it a D. I don't think it's very good. Final Death, five mana exile target creature. Awesome card for limited. We're going to give it an L for limited. Fruit of Tezeros, B sorcery. 
target player loses two life and it has escape so you got to be a burn deck you got to be a um a black burn deck you know it's like a red black burn uh, but but it's just not really like two life for all of the life gain incidental life gain that's in standard and everything like spending an entire card for two life even though you get to recast it but still we're recasting we're talking about four mana um i i don't i don't love it so even like a, a rakdos burn as a one of even i i don't really like it um i think it's just i think if this had three life we'd be talking two life i don't i don't think we're talking so i'm gonna give it an l all right funeral rites two and a b sorcery you draw two cards lose two life and put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard all right so we get divination plus you lose two life and then you mill two so the mill two could be an up you know that can be an upside right like that's not like that that can just be a downside um wasn't read the bones is read the bones in standard still <laughs> Read the Bones was Scry 2, Draw 2, wasn't it? And then Lose 2 Life? It's been a while since I've cast to Read the Bones. No, Read the Bones isn't in standard. Okay, well, it was it was reprinted somewhat recently. I don't remember where. Maybe Ixalan? Maybe that's where it was printed. Yeah, so Read the Bones was Scry 2, then Draw 2, you Lose 2. And that really, like, that's awesome play the first time when, when Read the Bones was in, it was in Theros the first time. I don't remember where it was reprinted. Where was it reprinted? It was reprinted somewhere. Um, someone help me out with that. But yeah, yeah, Notion Rain. Obviously, nobody's playing Notion Rain. That's, that's Scry 2, Draw 2. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I just don't think we're, we're playing Funeral Rites. Uh, Origins. It was reprinted in Magic Origins. That is true. Was that the last time it was reprinted? Read the Bones wasn't Origins. But anyway, I'm giving this an L. Um, uh, no, we'll give it we'll give it a D minus. Because you can you can definitely play this. You can definitely play this because you, you, you do get to put the two cards into your graveyard. So we'll give it a D minus. Hello, Demi. <clears throat> All right, uh, Grave Breaker Lamia. Four B. So, like, where are you playing this? So, you're probably playing this in a in a reanimation type deck, like a deck that you you want to, or like card, like a deck that you want cards in your graveyard. That's valuable, and maybe it's like a sideboard tool to draw more cards. I don't know. Grave Breaker Lamia, four and a black for a four four life link. When Gravebreaker Lamia enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast. This card's pretty sweet. I had not seen this card before. This one's pretty awesome. Um, Hawkeye is still not doing great. I'm still worried about Hawkeye. He's not doing great. So the four four lifelink body is that's a really good body like that's a that's a good body against aggro you know it's a really good blocker um, if you're playing a de if you're playing some kind of graveyard deck you probably are going to be like you're probably not the aggressor and like there's probably going to be a lot of decks that you're playing against where you're not the aggressive um, where you're not not the aggressor in the matchup so a four so a four four lifelink creature that can just block for you in combat and everything that's a really really good body um and then yeah of course you get to put whatever card whatever card in your graveyard that you want um you know go, go get to put your unburial rights or whatever you want these days you know whatever escape card you want into your graveyard um yeah it does combo with creeping chill that is true you can go put arc light phoenix into your graveyard it's kind of expensive for that but you can um uh what vice cream um does one less effect seems easy. okay yeah no yeah so then and then you can then you can make things from your graveyard cost less to cast if you got that stuff um you know you can go put like chemistry's insight in your graveyard and flash that back 
um, or you know any other card with, with uh, whatever the new flashback is called, Kickstarter, I don't know, whatever it's called. Um, but then, yeah, obviously Escape from this set. You get that also. Um, even just putting a, like something in your graveyard. Uh, what I don't even, What's that thing called? I don't even remember what that's called. What's like... I don't know why I can't think of it, but Chemistry's Insight has something. Jumpstart. Okay, Jumpstart. Not Kickstart. Jumpstart. That was close. <clears throat> you can't just put a creature into your graveyard if you're playing like a fine, you know, like, let's just say you're playing a rock deck where you have find finality and you can just use Gravebreaker Lamia as just a, a pretty good creature in your like creature rock deck and you just go put like another creature into your graveyard that you cast find and bring it back. You can just be doing that also. I feel like this could, could fit in different spots, certainly. You can go... You know, you can have this with Cauldron Familiar. You just go put a Cauldron Familiar in your graveyard. You bring it back with a food token, you know, like how Cauldron Familiar does. You can go do that, you know. Um, you can go put an artifact, a sweet artifact into your graveyard and then recast it with Emery because you got an Emery in play. There you go. And then Emery casts your artifact. Boom. Yeah, Order of Midnight, same thing. Um, yeah, and your artifact costs one less anyway because of Gravebreaker Lamia. Uh, yeah, and then obviously escape. Like, there's a lot of things you can do with this. I like this card. I like this card. All right, so what are we, what are we doing with, what are we grading this? Kind of feel like this is like a B, but... That's just because it's the kind of card that I really like, but it's probably not going to see as much play in standard. I'm going to give it a B minus. I like this card. I'm going to go B minus. Yeah, and then also, yeah, enchantment synergy stuff. You get that too. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Uh, next card Gray Merchant of Asphodel. Asphodel? I don't know. But anyway. Just always call it Gray Merchant. I know a lot of y'all like to call this card Gary. I don't like the name Gary. I go with Gray Merchant um, myself. But it's this is, of course, a reprint 3BB24. When Gray Merchant enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. This is a very solid card. I I liked the old art better. I don't like this art as much. I... Um, I wish we could have just like a straight up reprint with the art and everything that we had from Theros last time. Um, <clears throat> I yeah, I am giving this card an A. Uh, this is not going to be banned, but no, this is a this is a very very good card, and this is certainly a four of any any deck that you're playing. This this is a four of, and there's a lot of different cards in standard that this plays very well with. Um, yeah. Uh, under underworld dreams that's in standard oh, that must that must be in this set they reprinted that also um but uh yeah like there's just a lot of a lot of great stuff to be doing with gray merchant yeah absolutely love ayara of course love um uh what's the other card somebody said earlier i think um bola citadel but yeah i love this with bola citadel um, no, it's not legendary. Yeah, Blood for Bones. Yeah, this is incredible with Blood for Bones. Um, you know, have your Lamia go put it in your graveyard. Blood for Bones, bring it back. Uh, a lot of cool stuff to do with Grey Merchant. A lot of, yeah, yeah. So we're giving this an A. And this is certainly something that a lot of people um, want. I think like our, you know, day one, we're going to be playing a good, you know, like we'll definitely be playing some Grey Merchant decks day one of Thero Standard for sure. All right, Grim Physician B for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever Grim Physician dies, target creature and opponent controls gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. We've seen this this same exact card played in standard a decent amount. Like, not not under this name or art, but the same stats. One mana, you know, black, one mana, 1-1. One, one. Whenever it dies and a cre 
creature an opponent controls gets minus one minus one it it plays better than what it reads um one this is a zombie so you know you get your your zombie synergies if, if there are other zombie synergies still in standard you get that but uh two like this is a good card to sacrifice for decks that are they're doing like their whole sacrifice thing where you can just always have like the threat like i know there's like a, a zero mana sacrifice outlet in the, in the set somewhere and so you just always have the threat of giving a creature minus one minus one like in combat um so that's kind of always good and it's it's just a it's a you know, if you're playing mono black aggro, you know, like really you want like an aggro deck where this can just be a one drop that you're playing and everything, and it usually trades up because you're trading with like a two mana card. Um, uh, I think this is a, a, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad foot light fiend, but it's it's a very similar foot light fiend. It's foot light fiend is better against non creatures. This is better against creatures. Like if your opponent's playing creatures, you'd rather have this. Like the minus one minus one is is a more valuable tool because you can really mess up combat with that than than one point of damage. But if your opponent's not playing creatures, you want one point of damage to go upstairs. But then this is also a zombie, and a zombie is better than whatever full life fiend is. It's like a I don't know, like a horror or whatever it is. Uh so with that being said, let's give this a grade. Um I think it's Probably between a C and a D. Uh, I think I'll give this like a either either a C minus or a D plus. We'll go with a. I think we're kind of in between there. We'll go with like a D plus. Could be a C minus. Could could even upgrade to a C. Like depending on if the other other cards really help it out. Could be better. Hateful Eidolon, B, for a 1-2 lifelink. Whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura you controlled that was attached to it. So the obvious thing is dead weight. You get to play this and you know, play a dead weight on something that you kill, and then you draw a card. Um... Uh, yeah, I don't because I don't think Erebos' interventions very good. But anyway, uh, hateful Eidolon. Um, I'm not really seeing like the huge upside here. Uh, I guess like the biggest thing is like I guess trying to put it into a deck where you're trying to probably enchant like your own stuff with like a bunch of auras. They kill your thing. You draw lots of cards. Um, but just like the whole like you play this and and then you also have dead weight. I don't I don't love. Um, you know, it is a one mana one two. So you know, like if you're playing like a, a mono black aggro deck where you play like some dead weights also, like like that can be nice. Um, I really wish this was a two one. I'd be a lot more excited about this card if it was a two one. To be honest, like that'd be that just that'd make a huge huge difference. Um, but as is, I'm not sure how much play it will really see. It does have all like the enchantment synergies, of course. You know, it is an enchantment creature. There's just not a lot of or like dead weight. Besides dead weight, there's not a lot of or is you want to play too much. I don't know. Maybe this Myers Grasp. Oh, that card's good. Okay, never mind. This card's good. I hadn't seen this card before. So you play this with Myers Grasp also. Okay, there's a second card. We're getting there. Um, but yeah, so like we, our cost is not much here. You know, like we're only talking about a one mana card. You know, like we can't we can't expect everything in the world for a one mana card. Um, I mean, I think y'all are are getting a little bit too too high on the rating here. I'm gonna go with like a uh, inevitable end is another aura that you play. So you play this on it at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice a creature. Oh, you play it on your opponent's creature, right? I was like, why would you want to play that on this? Yeah. So yeah, you can you can have that. Um, here to, well, you're not. Uh, anyway, um, I think we're gonna go with like a C here, because like even if you you know you have this creature and you have like those removal spells, are, are we really doing that much? Like, what? Do, 
I don't know. I'm going to go with the C. All right, Inevitable End. We just we're just talked about this one. So three mana aura, Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature has at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. This is a way to get around um, indestructible creatures. You can think like, well, you can get rid of like gods because gods are indestructible. But if you put this on a god and they sacrifice a different creature, then the god's not a creature anymore. Then this would fall off. It's not a very... Um, not a very uh, um, reliable way to get rid of a god. Basically, whatever you put this on, they're most likely going to just be sacrificing that creature. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's basically removal for that, but it's the opponent always has a choice. Um, Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and go, we're going to go with like a D minus here. So basically not, oh, I'm not typing in the, the other part here. We're going to go with the D minus here. It's not completely unplayable. I won't give it an L, not completely unplayable, but, uh, you know, it's definitely better with like hateful light on and, and stuff like that. Um, but probably not played that much. I'm going to go with the D minus. All right, Lamp Hat of Death's Vigil, one in a black for a 1-3 enchantment creature. You can pay one, sacrifice a creature, each opponent loses a life, and you gain a life. You would really, really want the sacrifice effect for this to be playable, or like really need enchantment creatures. Like You, you specifically need enchantment creatures. Um, I think there's probably better things to be doing with both of those. I'm going to give uh, Lamp Hat of Death's Vigil an L. Minions return to a black flash enchant creature. When enchant when enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So they isn't that I mean, don't they already have this card in standard, but not three mana with flash? Like but like that's like cheaper. Um But yeah, you know, you do have flash. It's basically, you know. You get you get like the enchantment aura bonuses for your hateful Eidolon and stuff like that. Yeah, Kaya's Ghost Form. Yeah, because it's it's just like one. Yeah, Kaya's Ghost Form is just one black mana. Um, but yeah, you can put this on your opponent's creatures and then it dies. And then you get your opponent's creature. Sure, this is all stuff that I I don't think we're really doing in standard. I'll give it the D minus basically because of the hateful Eidolon. But yeah, maybe maybe this hateful Eidolon is like the new Edgewall Innkeeper. Maybe it is. All right, Meyer Triton, one in a black, two one Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, you put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. You gain two life. Is this the first Black Merfolk? I don't I don't remember seeing Black Merfolk before. Um. But yeah, so you, you'd want like a, a self mill effect. Um, you know, so you'd want like a card that self mills. You know, it, it has good creature types of zombie and merfolk for different things. Um, yeah, but it's only two cards, so it's not like gorging voucher. Like two cards is not that many cards, but it does have death touch, so it trades with lots of stuff. Um, the flash part is OP. This isn't this isn't flash. A lot of people say in C, and I, I'm kind of kind of seeing that because yeah like death touch is, is huge for this all for this for sure yeah fringe standard card used as filler for certain decks i think i'm gonna go a little bit less than that though i think we're gonna go like a c minus for this one until until i can be convinced more that like a uh, a real graveyard matters card <laughs> it's hard to type around hawkeye there's two other black merfolk yeah, sure. Two drop, two one death touch. I mean, that's that doesn't mean that it just suddenly sees tons of play. You know, if you think of like Vampire of the Dire Moon is a one drop, one one death touch life link. We're not like throwing that in every deck. All right, yeah, Myers Grasp is pretty good. One in a black enchant creature, enchant creature gets minus three, minus three. That that is pretty good. That is. Um, 
yeah, like you're you're basically killing almost every one, two, and three drop in standard. Obviously, not every one, not every one of those. But then also, you can just shrink some of the stuff. You know, like even like putting this on a questing beast, like just being an enchant, they get minus three, minus three. So now the questing beast is just a one, one, and then it's a lot easier to deal with. And they probably are just going to play their new questing beast from hand, kind of thing to make it like a full removal spell. Um, yeah, you don't you don't really. I mean, yeah, it gets rid of Nissa lands, but you, that's not really. Your your opponent still has Nissa, and you just used a spell, and and you still have to deal with the Nissa. So it's not like a profitable exchange, but yes, it can kill a Nissa land. Um, but yeah, no, this is just another two man. This is like a two mana card that can get rid of, um, you know, like a cheap thing like an Edgewall Innkeeper or a Knight of the Ebon Legion and stuff like that earlier early on in the game. That's also just kind of useful later on in the game. Yeah, this is, this is a good card. This is a good card. Um, yeah, and it it kind of matters like like what's like what are threats going to be of like how important the, the third toughness is. Um, you know, because obviously there is dead weight that's that you know like it's not like we're like throwing tons of dead weights in in different decks and everything like that. Um, yeah, that's the thing is we are still talking about a sorcery speed spell. And as far as sorcery speed for small creatures at two mana, are we really doing better than Legion's End here? You know, like Legion's End is really where you want to go for, for small creatures. So like this has to take out creatures that cost three plus mana or help you take them out. Because otherwise we just want to be playing Legion's End because of how strong, you know, like Legion's End, you know, you get to see their hand. You get to do so much stuff with Legion's End. So really for us to play this card, you know, either we need like that aura, um, benefit with a hateful idol on or we need to be getting rid of three plus mana stuff yeah bone crusher <clears throat> bone crusher is definitely a big one all right um so our grading scale yeah it's definitely a c you know like claim the firstborn level it's definitely there it could be just a little bit better probably we'll go like c plus Mogus's favor. Black for enchantment aura, enchant creature, enchant creature gets plus two, minus one. Isn't that unholy strength? Yeah, so isn't it, so this is unholy strength with escape. Yeah, I'm gonna give this an L. We're not gonna play this card. Could play this. Um Again, if we, if we, you know, if you just really need to play a hateful idol on deck, you just need more auras. That's like that's the only place where you're possibly playing this card. Um, but yeah, it does. You know, you put it on the idol on, and idol on turns into a three-one. It's the only possible time we're playing this. But I, I'm just gonna give it an L still. But um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the the maybe this is a real deck. It, it just seems like a deck that's doing a bunch of nothing unless we have this hateful idol on. But I don't know. Maybe this will actually be a real deck. Nightmare Shepherd, two BB. I mean, I did underrate Edgewall Innkeeper last time. I did. Maybe I'm doing the same thing. Uh, two BB for a four four flyer. All right, so four mana four four flyer. That's that's a good rate. Good rate. So what's our ability here? Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a to <laughs> create a token that's a copy. Try to say token and copy at the same time. Um, a copy. Create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a one-one and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. That's a pretty sweet upside. So we're talking about like you know you have this out there. They play like a wrath. All of your other creatures you can bring back from the wrath. Um, but then they're just one ones, but you get any ETB effects. So, you know, of course you want to play this with ETB effects, um, like playing this with, uh, burg you know, y'all know me. I really like burglar rats and your ox fen lurker. I like those kind of cards playing this with those cards, um, is awesome. You know, you just get to, you know, you play, you have like your burglar rat in play and then you play your shepherd. They attack with like their five, five or whatever. You just chump block their love struck beast. You chump block with your burglar rat. Burglar Rat comes back, makes them discard another card, and now it's a 1-1. One, one. Um, 
the so you know, like great so like yeah so that's what's gonna so the next thing i was gonna say was gray merchant so like gray merchant um with this so it does say like you create a token that's a copy of that creature so i assume the the token would have the cmc of the creature like in the top right hand corner and so like it would count like so gray merchant um you know devotion would count i would assume yes afterlife you'd still get your spirits yes yes like if if you if you had a, tith a tithe taker in play tithe taker would bring back a one one and would be a two one still and then they kill the tithe taker again i think you still get the two one in another tithe taker i think that's how the wait so do you just get infinite creatures there's like the zero mana sack. That that's probably not how that works, is it? No, no, no. That's not how it works. It says you have to exile that. No, no, no. So that doesn't work. No, because whenever the creature dies, you have, you may exile. You have to exile the creature, and then then you do get that. So no, never mind. That's not how that works. Sorry. Which I'm sure that's what everybody's saying in chat now. Yeah. So the the tokens keep the CMC and the pip. So yeah. So it does work with Gray Merchant. Um. Yeah, and it's a May. If you want to keep your creature in the graveyard, you can. You don't have to exile your creature. Uh, but yeah, it's an awesome card. It's not legendary. It just fits fits kind of everywhere. It blocks Questing Beast. Um, yeah, this is just an awesome card. Like it, this just is like a four of. If you want to play in like your your black aggro deck. Like this this card's awesome. Um, makes my wrinkle worse. I like wrinkle. I mean, I. I think this is just an A. Yeah, I mean, I think this is just an A. I don't really see why this... Yeah, I think this is just an A. I'm going to give it an A. All right, Nyxborn Marauder, 2BB for a 4-3. And plus, yeah, you get you get any kind of enchantment bonus. Um, yep. <laughs> right next to... Same mana cost... Almost same stats. One's an A, one's an L. Because <laughs> one has an ability, one doesn't. So that's an L. Omen of the Dead. B, enchantment, flash. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. And then 2B, sack, Omen of the Dead, scry, two. I honestly don't think this is good enough for standard. The only reason I think you play this is if like the enchantment matters a whole lot. But whenever we have find finality... And we have uh, Midnight Raven, whatever that Raven is, Order of Midnight, because we have both of those. Um, I don't, I don't think we're really playing Omen of the Dead, to be honest. So we're just gonna go ahead and give. I'm gonna just give this card an L. Um, the reason to play this, of course, is you, you get you get one creature back, and then you also get one devotion. Like for a gray merchant deck, you get to have this out there where you get a devotion, and then like later on you can scry two. But I think we're playing Order of Midnight instead, and it is a one mana instant. I don't. <clears throat> I don't know. Kind of think that like Order of Midnight being able to just be a two two all the time. All right, yeah, it's not an L. All right, fine. We'll we'll up. That's true. One mana instant. We probably shouldn't just be an L. Uh, we'll go. I'm gonna go with the D. Oh yeah, Nightmare Shepherd with Yorvo. Yeah, Yorvo just comes back bigger. Yorvo comes back as a five five. That's true. Farika's Liberation, 2B instant. Choose one. Target opponent sacks a creature or target opponent sacks an enchantment. That's enchantment re removal in black? Is this the first black enchantment removal spell? Libation, not liberation. Sorry. Libation. This is the first? Yeah, black never gets enchantment removal. So, Our Grixis deck can actually kill... Enchantments now. 
How about that, Hawkeye? Yeah, we can we can ki kill enchantments now with our Grixis deck. Hawkeye's excited. Look at him. He's like, yeah, good to kill enchantments with, with my Grixis deck. Finally, we don't have to lose to Experimental Frenzy over and over and over again. Yeah. All right, so what so what are we giving this as far as a rating then? Um, probably a a moderately played sideboard card. I think that's where we're at. Like a B is like a moderate, you know, a, a pretty widely played. Uh, C is a narrow but still regularly used sideboard card. We're probably a little bit better than that. So I'm gonna go like a B. Let's give it let's give this a B minus. B minus, good sideboard card. Black enchantment removal. Um, yeah, you, yeah, we actually get to kill, oh, that's true, we actually get to get rid of Trailer Crumbs now. How great is that, Hawkeye, we can get rid of Trailer Crumbs. Yeah, who needs white anymore? All right, anyway, Farika spawn, 3B, 34, escape 6, and it, when it escapes with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, when it enters the battlefield this way, each opponent sacrifices a non-Gorgon creature. Yeah, they're all just going to have only Gorgon creatures. Right, okay, so that's not going to do very much. All right, L. Rage Scarred Berserker. 4B for a 5-4 when Rage Scarred Berserker enters the battlefield. Target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 0, and gains indestructible until end of turn. Just going to give this another L and move on. Scavenging Harpy. 3 mana, 2, 1 flyer when it enters the battlefield. Exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. This was a two mana, and we got a two one flyer. Like maybe, maybe we'd be talking then. At three mana, we're not, we're not talking. Another L. Soul Reaper of Mogus, two B for a two three, and you can pay two and a B to sacrifice a creature, draw a card. All right, so we are talking about a sack outlet. We are talking about drawing cards. We are talking about an enchantment thing. So it does have like some upsides here from being just a normal three mana two three. But that activation cost of being three mana, I don't think we're really doing that. Um, these are some pretty cool looking minotaurs. Like this this guy, this guy. Like these are some cool looking minotaurs, but. Um, I think we'll go with like a D minus, because this is sack creature draw card, so I won't go with an L, but we'll go with a D minus. Temple Thief, 1B for a 2-2. Two, two. Can't be blocked by enchanted creatures or enchantment creatures. Cool. Do you know why you can't be blocked? Because you're not in the deck. So you're an L. Treacherous Blessing, 2B enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Whenever you cast a spell, you lose a life. And whenever it becomes the target of a spell or an ability, sacrifice it. Um, so that's what, I mean, we're talking about three mana, draw three. That's pretty awesome. You do certainly want to get rid of it because every spell that you cast afterwards, um, you are losing life. So you need to kind of get rid of it. So basically, all you, you know, if you target it with a spell or an ability, you're sacrificing it. Um, yeah, great with Doom Foretold. That's very true. That's very true. It is great with Doom Foretold. Um, that's a really good card. Like I was thinking Golgari Queen of like you play Vol Veraska Golgari Queen sack this. But whenever you tick up your Golgari Queen to target this, it becomes the target of ability. It, it sacrifices, and so therefore the Golgari Queen doesn't... That trigger doesn't resolve, so you don't actually get to gain a life and draw a card. Um, yeah. Uh, I think Thassa, you just flicker creatures. This isn't a creature. And plus, if you try if you try targeting this with a spell or ability at all, you sacrifice it, so you can't really just flicker it. Um so is this good in mono black? I think this is a good like sideboard card in mono black when you're playing against non-aggro decks where you don't really need to worry about your loss of life. Um, yeah, the Golgari Queen still adds the loyalty. You'll still get your plus two loyalty, but. Uh, Corvold, yes. Great with Corvold. Yes, wonderful with Corvold, wonderful with Doom Foretold. Um, yeah, those two cards. Yeah, wonderful with both of those. 
Um, but no, if, if you're mono black aggro and you want a card against control, I mean, I think this could be a cyborg card against control, like where you just, you know, have a three mana draw three that helps you finish stuff out where you where like the, the lose one life isn't that big a deal. Um, yeah, well, this Phyrexian Arena is not in standard. Um, so yeah, you could be like a Doom Foretold deck. That's also playing like Archon of Sun's Grace. So you play an enchantment and then you make another 2 2 life linker. And this thing's like a, a 3 4 life linker. So you're gaining life to offset the life link if you don't have Doom Foretold. And you got, you know, like your Oath of Kaya in there also that gains you some life. Um, you know, you could start start building there with like a, a black white Doom Foretold life gain thing. Oh. So if Raska works, you still sack it and gain a life and draw a card. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, yeah, this is definitely uh definitely like seems like an Orzov kind of uh thing. But yeah, I like it. So yeah, three mana draw three. Um so where are we going with this grade? We're probably going with like a B, a good amount of play in standard and a support role. I think we're we're probably right around there with a B. I like that. I mean, we are talking three mana draw three a lot of people had a's I'm not, I'm not sure i'm ready to call this card just an a i think you want to because I, I think you kind of have to build around it a little bit um oh heliod can target it with the count Ooh, this with heliod okay then you get the plus one plus one counter to your treacherous blessing and then it, you sacrifice it that's pretty cool too all right b plus b plus B plus. Timurit calls the dead. To B. First and second chapter are both put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And then chapter three is you gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. All right, so this is basically History of Benalia, right? First chapter, make a 2-2. Second chapter, make a 2-2. Just like History of Benalia. Um, you do need... It's a little bit more work. You don't just automatically get the 2-2. You do have to... You mill three, and then you have to exile a creature or enchantment from your graveyard. So you do have to have a creature or enchantment in your graveyard after you mill the three. Um, so, you know, you probably want to play this with a lot of creatures and enchantments. But the third chapter is not nearly as good as History of Benalia for an aggressive deck. This is much more of a um, a defensive third chapter, um, where you're you know you gain X you know like let's say you have one zombie in play, two zombies in play. Like let's say you have two zombies in play, you gain two, scry two. Um, if you have you know they kill one of your zombies, which happens a lot, you have one zombie left, you gain one, scry one. Not spectacular. I w wish, I definitely wish that this was, this would be better if it was like your opponent's lose X life or it's like gain X, lose X kind of thing. You know, like instead of the scry X, like just, you know, you would want to be aggressive with that kind of thing. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Field of the Dead was legal. Um, yeah, you could, it's possible you have no creatures in the graveyard after you, Creatures or enchantments, if if you haven't really had anything else die, turn one or two, and then you just mill over three and you just mill over some lands. I mean, it's possible you could whiff, and then uh, then that's really rough if you whiff. Um, great synergy with which card? Oh, this thing. Yeah, yeah, very good synergy with this thing. Yep, yep, that's definitely true. Yeah, really good synergy there. Um. Scry X isn't isn't basically draw a card, but it does set up it does set up your draw steps well. Um, but yeah, like this is this is basically a weaker history of Benalia. But history of Benalia was awesome. This is in a much better color than history of Benalia. It's a lot easier to cast. You know, being two and a black, you can play this in a lot of different variations and on a lot of different places. Um. But you know, like, you know, you don't get that 
like that third chapter of history of Benalia was really great. And you, you don't get like that really good third chapter here. Um, <laughs> East Norman over there. All right. Um, but yeah, it has, it has really, really large downside. You know, like if you, if you miss on either of these, they like exile your graveyard or something you miss on either of these. Um, you know, if they're, if that becomes a really popular card, so people are playing stuff like this, to like exile your graveyard or whatever. I don't know. Um, you know, your opponent has a ley line of the void, then this card does absolutely nothing kind of thing. So there's a lot of downside here. Um, I think I'm going to go with like a, man, this is kind of like a weird place to rank this with all that being said. I really wish it dealt damage and helped you finish games because that's what you want your aggressive deck to do. If you miss, you still get escape fodder. I mean, that's that's if you play it with escape stuff. Um, I think I'm gonna go with like a C. I'm just gonna go with the C. I'm not sure. Like this is one that it's kind of hard to rank. I'm gonna go with the C. All right, Timurit chosen from death. BB for a two star. Timurit's toughness is equal to your devotion to black. Um, so just like Daxos from earlier, and it has one B exile up to two target cards from graveyards. You gain one life for each creature card exiled this way. So you get to have some uh, graveyard hate, just kind of built into your two drop. Um, I think the best thing that this is is a creature for a devotion deck. But honestly, this isn't really a. Uh, People are underestimating. Yeah, I mean, I, I like this card. Like I, I talked about, like how that's that's a pretty strong card. I didn't really know where to rate it though, but yeah, I, I could definitely see this being a, a a big like this has high upside. I could definitely see this being a pretty big player in standard. That has high upside. Uh, this card, not so much. Um, a lot of people say C C minus B B minus stuff like that. I, um, devotion, aggro, mono black. Well, not in not side. I don't know if you really sideboard this. I mean, maybe because like this for if you're playing a devotion aggro deck, you're probably not going to be wanting to spend two mana all the time for this ability. If you're like an aggro deck, you need to get ahead on the battlefields. So you need to be spending your mana for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I just think that I, I there's a lot of good two drops in black, and you know a lot of good ones with like enter the battlefield effects. This doesn't have any kind of enter the battlefield effects. Uh, I, I'm not in love with this one. I don't think that... Uh, I think that really the only way for this to be playable is that second ability is is really valuable. So, like, that's really the only place... Like, But if it is, we're playing this main deck. Like, I don't think this is really that much of a sideboard card. Um, so what's up with the purple banner above his name? Basically, this is, like, the legendary border. Um... Is there another legendary card around here? That's the border that says that something's legendary. Which there's like no other legendary cards. There we go. There's a, a red legendary card. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's it's legendary, but then also it's an enchantment creature, so it gets like the enchantment border bonus. Yeah, so basically, I'm, I'm not really that thrilled to play this card. I don't want to really... I don't think this is probably that great of a... I think, like, this is kind of, like, similar to, like, Sir Farron the Henchhammer, which is a D. I think, you know, like, maybe you put it in a deck. Like, it's it's something you'll probably see in Standard, but that's about it. I'm going to give this a D. Underworld Charger, 2B for a 3-3. Can't block. It escapes with two plus one plus one counters on it for five. So three mana three three is an okay rate, but we can just do better in standard. It does have escape, <clears throat> which is kind of cool, and then it's a five five. But 
still the the bar in standard is very high and i i'm just gonna give this an l um underworld dreams bbb enchantment whenever an opponent draws a card underworld dreams deals one damage to that player I think that Underworld Dreams hasn't really seen a, a ton of play since like early early days. Like early days it could. It did, you know, like um But yeah, this is good with Grey Merchant. I think this is kind of more of a sideboard card than a main deck card. I think this is more of a sideboard card against low control decks. Like against I don't think you really want this main deck because it's it doesn't affect the battlefield. And if you're thinking about like a, a mid-range creature matchup, um, like I guess if it, if it's a very slow, if, like your opponent's playing a slow mid-range deck, but you know like when it, when they're playing a, a you know aggress like there's a lot of aggressive creatures. If you think about like right now like red black aggro and all these questing beast decks and all that kind of stuff, you have to be affecting the battlefield. And Underworld Dreams doesn't, but it'll help you win long games. Um, uh, it doesn't really enable spectacle because a lot of the spectacle cards are sorcery so they're on your turn and underworld dreams deals damage on their turn so it's not really good against that um but yeah obviously yeah with gray merchant um but still i mean i think i'd rather be playing like a yara and and midnight reaper and murderous rider i think i'd rather be playing those kind of cards in my main deck of my gray merchant deck and not playing underworld dreams I'd rather have yeah Midnight Reaper, Murderous Rider, Ayara, and I want those cards, and I want four of all those cards. I don't want so I don't want more enchantments. But then, uh, but then against a you know a, a control deck that's not really playing creatures, you know, you, maybe you take out like your Murderous Rider and you bring in your Underworld Dreams. Um, the best black card in the set. I'm not so sure about that. So yeah, I think it's a great, great cyborg card. Um, uh, I don't think it's really that that great of a main deck card. I don't think you're playing because of like standard's pretty aggressive. There's a lot of good aggressive decks in standard, and that's not really changing. And Underworld Dreams isn't really where you want to be against aggressive decks. Um. So I think we're at like a B, a moderately played sideboard card. You know, like basically a, a pretty highly played sideboard card. Um, and that's like a B. I sh B should say a highly played sideboard card, not moderately played, because then incredibly popular is an A. I think we're at like B, B minus. Um, for control mirrors, BBB is going to be a lot. That's going to be, it's pretty difficult to cast. It's, it's really narrow of like the decks you can put it in. I'm going to give it a B minus. All right, Venomous Hierophant, 3B, three 3-3 three, 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 Death Touch, enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. We'll give this an L. And Woe Strider, 2B for a 3-2. When, when Woe Strider enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 white goat creature token, sack another creature, scry one, and it also has escape five, exile four other cards from your graveyard. And Woe Strider escapes with two plus one plus one counters on it. Yeah, this card is good. Yeah, this card can just fit in so many different places. Um, I mean, this is this is what I want, not Underworld Dreams in my on the deck. Yeah, you sack creature, scry one. Um, and the instant speed sack outlet, awesome. You get, you know, it's a three, two plus another O one body. Um, and you can bring it back with escape uh, and make it a five four with an O one body also. This card is good, man. So now we have to fit. Now we have to fit Murderous Rider, Yara, Midnight Reaper, and Woe Strider into our mono black decks. It's not that good. I don't know. It's pretty good. Pretty good. It can fit a lot of different places. Um, yeah. Let's give this an A. Yeah. Free sack outlets. Very nice. Like you know. So basically, you get to chump block, sack, sack your goat, or you know, like you. You play like a, raven a ravenous rats or what's it? It's burglar rats now. All right, yeah, you, you play burglar rats on two, um, and then you play this thing on three. You you chump block with your burglar rats, sack it, scry one, 
you, know, you can chump block with your goat, sack it, scry one. Um, pretty nice. It does die, die to Bone Crusher Giant, sure. It, it leaves behind an 0-1 at least. Um, and then, of course, you know, you get to bring it back in a little bit and make it a 5-4. And then they kill it again, then you bring it back and make another 5-4. All right, so we're going to give that card an A as well. All right, so for our... Um, yeah, this this definitely looked like the best... This is definitely the best color so far. So far, this... Black definitely looked a lot better than white or blue. We had three A's with Woe Strider, Nightmare, Shepherd, and, of course, Gray Merchant of Asphodel. We had three A's. We had two, two A minuses also with Eat to Extinction and Agonizing Remorse. So I guess those are going to be our top five cards in the set. Bunch of good cards here with Black. Oh, yeah, Woe Strider, Woe Strider is awesome. Yeah, combos, mayhem, devil, corvold, absolutely. <laughs> we need a, a goat lord. Scry one is nothing. Nah, scry one's good. Okay. Um, all right. So there, there we go. So that's black. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, let me know what you think of the different cards. What cards am I overrating? What cards am I underrating? Which ones are you really excited to play? Um, you know, which cards do you want me to see, uh, see me build decks around right away day one, but that's going to be our third part of our set review. We're halfway there. We're going to get to red, green, and then the multicolor artifacts and the lands and everything else with the last one. Um, but, uh, that's, that's it here for the black section. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you for the next video, which is going to be red. All right. See you there.